Hey friends of the forest, Dandelion here. Welcome to another edition of Foragers Broadcast. I'm here romping around in the woods, looking for hen of the woods, and I thought that uh, I could possibly provide you all some thoughts and tips. So, there we have the woods. And hen of the woods gets its name Woods because it's a hen in the woods. But it doesn't run away and it doesn't really move. So what I'm currently looking for are trees that are oak trees. So you gotta get to know some oak trees. So you could either look on the ground and understand the leaves of an oak. So here's for example a white kind of oak, right? Rounded leaves, uh, rounded edges of the leaves. And I'll eventually show you a red oak. Hello. And of course this is the bark of that tree. And this is a little small. I usually look for them like double trees or uh, trees that are pretty big. And what I will do is just wander the woods and circle trees. Um, another indicator, of course, which are also able to be rendered edible. Uh, I did that in my last video, which will be coming onto youtube.com backslash return to nature skills quite soon. Have it uploaded, just got to uh, publish that. So uh, there I talk about acorn harvesting and processing a little bit as a food, um, but it's definitely not a food until you process it. What's up, Katie? Welcome. Nice, there's an old crusty mushroom with a bulbous base, right? The remnants of the veil. This is some old amanita, probably a lepidella, which are the white, very poisonous amanita. So you gotta wander around and look for oak trees that have some kind of damage. Ooh, look at that. This is funny, because this is a very skinny tree. Um, this is Betulinus piptoporus, the birch polypore. This is actually a very medicinal uh, mushroom. There's actually a man uh, called Otzi. What's up? Hello, friends. Welcome, welcome. Have a beautiful day, Evan, in the woods. And anyone feel free to ask any questions as we go. Um, oh man, the comments are spazzing out. Uh, there we go. Thank you, Susan. Thanks for thanking me. So this is uh, the birch polypore, uh, Betulinus pepto piptoporus. This is the first time I've ever seen it not on a white birch in my entire life. So Otzi, the Iceman, who was up in the Swiss Alps, uh, I think he's about 40,000 years old, he was discovered very intact. He was frozen in glaciers, but we don't need those, so we're just pumping uh, carbon into the atmosphere to melt them. And one of the benefits of that is um, that we found Otzi. And Otzi actually had this mushroom in bead form. He actually carved them into beads and he had them on a bracelet or a necklace and that was a sort of anti-parasitic pill. So uh, probably the world's earliest known pills. Although probably in China there's some earlier stuff. So this is a medicinal mushroom. I actually have uh, uh, harvested lots of it and uh, have a gallon of tincture in the works, double extract. So uh, let me know if you're interested in a medicinal mushroom extract because I got lots and lots of it and proceeds go to supporting this work to continue. What's up, Rebecca Littleford? How's it going? So, as I was mentioning about the oak trees, you just kind of look for them in the woods. So I see kind of a double or a triple there. Here's a pretty good one too. And you just kind of look around them. So you play ring around the oaks. And uh, Hen of the Woods is also called Maitake, uh, also known as Griffola fondosa, and they grow at the base of trees. And of course, earlier in the season, you get two other mushrooms, the uh, black staining polypore and the Berkeley's polypore, which some say are edible. Um, I've never found them to be uh, very enjoyable in eating, but um, you look for hen of the woods and they're super delicious and very medicinal. Of course, I have a uh, hen of the woods tincture as well. So they make a really medicinal tincture. They're really deliciously edible. It's like one of the best medicines that you can eat and taste great. So you can just chop them up, saute them, and uh, get yourself out and about looking for some hen of the woods. 
So feel free, if anybody has any questions, uh, drop them on me. I'd love to share if you have any thoughts. And uh, we'll see what else I can find. I found a chicken of the woods as well, but it was pretty far gone, unfortunately. So usually you go out uh, after about two to three days of rain, and then two to three days of sunny weather after that is when they kind of will all start popping. And then if you go out there, you know, six, seven days later, they're gonna be bug hotels. It's where bugs reproduce. So there is some uh, confusion about chicken of the woods. Um, can it be eaten on hemlock? Hemlock tree is not the poison hemlock plant. I think that almost entirely comes from that. People are concerned about eating them off of conifers. I've had several confirmations that it's okay. Um, I've never eaten them off conifers, but I know people who have with no issues. There's also issues with chicken of the woods uh, being harvested off of cherry trees. Cherry trees uh, are said to contain cyanide. It's a cyanide-like compound, but it's actually rendered out during heat. So if you um, can render it through cooking, which you should do with all mushrooms, uh, then you actually render the toxins, the potential toxins, out of the uh, potential concern of the mushroom extracting and absorbing enough uh, cyanide-like compound, prunacin, that's it, uh, enough prunacin into the mushroom to make you sick in any sort of way. Um, I've eaten them. I know others who have eaten them off of cherry trees. I fed them to a whole bunch of my friends. We've never had any problems. Jesse asks, uh, I would love to buy some tinctures. Are you able to send through the border up to Canada? I believe so. So feel free uh, if you're interested in looking at whatever tinctures we have. I just posted an availability list. So we finally got our list together. And um, yeah, can definitely. And I also love to do custom formulas. So I've currently working on a medicinal mushroom blend with which is like months and months of foraging, uh, tincturing, decocting, and making what's called double extracts. And so currently I have maitake, reishi, turkey tails, and birch polypore. And I'm looking for more chaga. And so that would be the five mushroom blend. And those are just monsters against cancer and things like that. So uh, feel free to always uh, message at return, uh, herbalcsa at returntonature.us. There we go, the old memory. Katie says, lavender salve is amazing for my bug bites. Thanks, Dan. So glad you enjoy our lavender salve. We make three kinds of salve, basically plain, lavender, and wintergreen. I love the wintergreen, I love wintergreen. Wintergreen, nobody makes wintergreen like us. Wintergreen is the greatest, nobody, nobody, can, nobody knew wintergreen was so complicated, okay? Um, that's my ode to a certain uh, psychopath. Um, so we make three salves as well. We have those available on the website, returntonature.us, and uh, all proceeds help support. Now I have to repair some craziness in the van. It's like I just made money, which I planned to put into uh, doing solar and uh, insulation because the winter's coming up, but now it's going to go into the fact that I put a scratch in the van, unfortunately, and also, um, apparently the gas tank is not filling, so that seems like it's gonna be a four or $500 issue, so there goes all the money that I just saved. Woohoo! But if you'd like to help, uh, you know, buy some herbal goods, that really helps us continue to thrive. What's up, Spirit Ajara, Ahara? I'm not sure how to say your actual Magical name, thank you for your support today. Really appreciate it. Magical friends out there, really a lot of respect to you all for continuing to uh, do the good works despite all of the chaos and confusion and disorder. I kinda had a post today about how um, me and my friend Ken talked a lot about how these the new social justice warrior can fall into the trap of being just as dogmatic as the ones they are against and how this idea of the court of public opinion has arisen through social media and the court of public opinion is actually based on guilty uh, until proven innocent not the other way around and we kind of realized that that was like Saddam Hussein's Iraq so when we have a social uh, network such as we have and rumors spread or ideas spread that aren't true they can't stop they still spread like wildfire so uh, that's an amazing phenomena we all are bearing witness to uh, it's kind of like the fake news phenomena 
uh, extended to social and uh, community uh, ideas. So again, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. I'm gonna go look for some more mushrooms. So fall is the time of hens and chickens. Hen of the woods and chicken of the woods. There's a cool mushroom. It's actually one of the very few edible amanitas, not recommended for uh, amateurs or beginners. But this is a vulvate amanita. It gets that word because of this little sheath at the bottom, which is actually called the vulva. You can see it there, it's kind of like an egg white. And then you have these striations along the margin of this mushroom, white gills. You can see, ta-da! And actually it has a space between the gills and the stem. And that's really important. And this is called the tawny grisette. They are edible, but they're never really substantial. I mean, that's really not much. So never eaten those, um, but it's one of the very few amanitas that are actually not deadly poisonous. So there's probably about four, uh, the blusher, the grisette, the tawny grisette, and amanita muscaria. Those are the ones that aren't uh, poisonous. Let's see, let's catch up. Hey Maria, welcome and thanks for joining and uh, please help spread the word of the Return to Nature Revolution in any way, shape, or form you are down, including sharing posts, spreading the word, coming to classes, all that really helps. Katie John says, I'll be headed all around this weekend to hang flyers. Rise up. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Katie is uh, a local here and she offered to do some street teaming, so uh, I sent her over some flyers. I'm going to trade her. Uh, some herbal goodies, probably some salves or something. So if you're ever interested in posting up flyers uh, for classes and workshops, uh, send me an email, dan at returntonature.us, and uh, we can work some something out. I'm also uh, meeting with a friend this week to do some to help with some post-production video work. My schedule just got so intense and so busy that I can't continue to do all the video editing. So I have a bunch of videos uh, shot that I put on YouTube and stuff, but I can't really maintain them, so hope that works out. Eyes crossed, fingers crossed. So, just looking around here, this is a nice oak tree, which I just looked at, but no hens. I think I'm actually a little early. So, no hens there. Just looks like a piece of poop. I guess not really a piece, if you wanna get technical. A log, a log of shite. That's the technical term. So I'm not seeing too many mushrooms. I think I'm out of the transition. Although it's really interesting because that birch polypore looked extremely uh, fresh. So every mushroom you find kind of tells you a little bit about what cycle you're in. And so any mushroom you find you should automatically think, oh, okay, kind of that's where this group of mushrooms is at, maybe that tells me more about what I should be looking for and what to narrow down. Uh, hey Pamela, Pamela says, I live in Portland, Oregon, where the air is very badly affected by huge forest fires and Fukushima, uh, I added that part, close to the city. There's ash falling from the sky. What do you suggest to support our health under these times? Um, the first thing that comes to me is elderberry. Make sure you're tonifying your lungs. Um, OSHA root is amazing. Uh, that would be a good combination. Make some elderberry elixir with OSHA. That'll be amazing. Uh, anything else come to mind? You know, then just sinus cleansing. Um, maybe you can look at the neti pot. You can consider um, always remineralizing your body, helping your immune system function properly with a uh, good diet. Also, if you have dry uh, heaving, then consider something like, I guess it's, heaving is not the word. Uh, that's kind of like throwing up, but not producing any vomit. Um, where you're, you're coughing, but nothing is coming out, an unproductive cough. Then you wanna do something like mucilaginous substances, of which there are many, you can look that up. Kind of like mucus helps you produce mucus and mucus is the body's mechanism for cleansing itself so when you have mucus you're detoxifying dead dead cells toxic tissue things like that so good luck out there wishing you well sorry to hear about the fires california is also raging with fires 
there's uh, another hurricane coming um, after Hurricane Harvey has just completely destroyed a lot of oil refineries, oddly enough, and people and people's lives. I think the death toll is approximately 30 for Hurricane Harvey. Um, but everyone actually is had their houses inundated with toxic sludge. Um, so, you know, the fecal, fecal matter, um, environmental, uh, uh, I should say, uh, industrial waste all mixes together in that water. So people's houses are trashed. They predicted it will cost something like a hundred billion dollars to repair uh, the damage of Hurricane Harvey. That's approximately what it took to restore uh, Hurricane Katrina. And sadly, a lot of that is going to go into subsidizing oil companies. So this is like the difference of free market capitalism would say, hey, you're on your own, you gotta deal with it. Um, what we're going to do instead is take taxpayer money and give it to the oil companies, which are likely the cause of why the storms are getting severe. Climate scientists are saying the storms will get more severe because of temperature differentiation and moisture in the atmosphere. Of course, that's all just conspiracy theories and we should instead just continue to destroy our lives and not do anything about it. Um, so Heather Joy Roth says, Hey Dan, happy to see you on here today. What is the best way for someone with no experience in herbalism and foraging to start? What a great question. Um, I would just recommend go out there every single day and look. And don't put anything in your mouth, don't eat anything, don't expect to eat anything. Just go and observe and see what calls to you. And I did that a lot. I probably did that for three or four years. Uh, I started with mushrooms actually. And I would just go around and see, you You have the innate ability, forget names, you have the innate ability to see things that you recognize and you say, that's that thing again. And eventually the names will come as you start doing more studying. But first, you should just be able to scan and look and observe and see differences and see patterns and do pattern brain pattern recognition is what it's called. So you need to go out there and just observe and look at differences and see color differentiation and get your senses stimulated again with the practice of observing. And from there, you'll find one or two plants that you recognize or that you learn in a field guide and then make, you know, utilize that. Don't um, forget that, you know, three to five plants that you utilize and work with on a regular basis is more effective than hundreds of plants which you know the Latin name of, which you have no direct connection with. So let me see what else is here. Uh, Frankie says, unfortunate about Harvey and us here in Florida and Georgia are about to get slammed. Yeah. So if I was in Florida or Georgia, I would definitely want to leave. I would not wait for the news. Um, if you're sheltering in place, good luck. We send you lots of prayers and blessings. It's a shame and hopefully we can build green infrastructure out of this mess. It's like nature is absolutely destroying the old way and we continue to just keep building the old way in the same place, not adjusting our borders accordingly. And we are in the argument of our survival, which is climate change isn't real. Does climate change exist? Scientists are saying yes. People who don't know science are saying no. Um, so sadly, the people who are denying climate change are not the trained PhD experts, oddly enough. So you can talk all you want, but we've you know, uh, educated certain experts and we now have a major distrust in these experts. I get it. We don't have to do that. Let's just focus the conversation on not is climate change the cause of this. Let's focus on what's wrong with solar and wind energy. What's wrong with reinvesting in sustainable energy which doesn't produce local pollution and more garbage. What's wrong with lower energy bills and lower energy costs. That is how the, to frame the conversation. Stop bickering about is glo climate change real or anything like that and just stick to the details like what's wrong with solar panels? Why don't you want solar panels on your house which will help you get a lower energy bill? What the hell is wrong with these people? You know, there's no problem in that. Uh, Ahara says flood and drought scenarios will only increase, increase as the depletion of the environment continues. Yes, whether it's environment related or just like nature is finally going to take her wrath out on these people humans, us. Nature's patterns become more violent when disturbed, just as within our own human nature. Yeah, exactly. Like, what we are faced with is some sort of... It's funny, because the people who are most in denial are all about biblical prophecy, too. So, um, they're, they're like, oh, climate change, it's such garbage, that's never happening, and yet they'll, they'll be preaching about the apocalypse. And so it's like, 
cool, climate change is some paranoid conspiracy theory, but the idea of a biblical apocalypse that, you know, uh, John the Baptist called into being, that's totally logical and reasonable. Again, let's say, what's wrong with being a little more respectful to the earth? What's wrong with making sure that if we get more hurricanes, we don't have as many toxic chemicals released into the atmosphere, which kill fish and kills wildlife and kills humans and drives up the cancer rate. That's the conversation to be having, not distraction on whether climate change is real or not. You know, getting with the program of local pollution. I mean, do you all want to live in Beijing, China, where they wear masks to go outside because the cancer rate is, you know, everybody gets cancer? That's, that's your... You know, anyway, back to plants. So Katie John says, red clover was my very first herb I studied and learned about, then slowly moved on. Awesome point. You can go a long way with red clover. You can do a lot of things with each herb. It's another thing that I don't like the idea that, oh, what's this herb good for? And then you say, oh, that herb's good for colds. No, it doesn't work like that. Herbs are multi-applicational. And if we understand the herbal action, like febrifuge, mucilaginous, et cetera, et cetera, then we can apply an herb in several ways. Frankie says, thank you, hoping to be able to get out of here. Good luck. Not sure yet. Already out of water and gas at several places here. Man, that sounds really scary. Definitely sending prayers for all the people in Florida or if it travels up to North Carolina or I've even seen some reports say it may hit Jersey, New York, again. That's why I feel very called to live in a Far Edge Mobile so I can get out of Dodge. You know, it's definitely ridiculous. Um, so here's a great mushroom uh, to identify, to learn about. It's a Rusula species, and I don't know which species, but for all intents and purposes, the way to identify Rusula is either looks like a Rusula or a Lactarius. This is kind of the Super Mario looking mushroom. Um, so you get no milk on the gills. If you damage the gills and there's milk in there, then that's a Lactarius. If you don't get any milk, then it's likely a Rusula. Other point of a Rusula, the stem is extremely straight, so there's no bulbous base at the bottom. Um, as I showed you before, this one actually, the gills go straight through to the stalk. So these are all important things. And then you have this uh, part of the Rusula is the cap peels. So uh, I don't want to say the cap. I used to call it a pellicle. Someone corrected me and called it something else. Uh, it's not really working, of course. Let's see, maybe you can see that. Where's the... So that is the peeling, what I'm going to call a pellicle. Someone out there can correct me. So that's uh, all significant parts of determining a rusula. Not many of them are edible. Um, the green ones are the ones that I eat. M Michelle says, the earth is tilting, that's why climate is changing. Yes, pollution shouldn't be happening. The apocalypse is happening someday. Yeah, well, it's guaranteed that if we continue to trash the world that we live in, we will drive up the disease rate, we will drive up the cancer rate, we will suffer the consequences, we will not have fresh drinking water, um, you know, we will have polluted oceans. Isn't that enough? Do we really need to argue anything else? Isn't that enough? What I just mentioned is plenty. You know, that's, that's reason enough to, to be careful about chemical companies. That's reason enough to stop spraying all these lawns and all these areas with toxic chemicals. That's reason enough. We don't have to get insane with nitpicking details. Let's understand that our healing and health and our fresh water and our environment, the air that we breathe, that's reason enough to, to be more sustainable and more clean about how we manage our societies. Uh, Katie says, any recommendations of an online herbalism school? Of course, I have an online herbalism school. I do an online mentorship program, so I'm about three quarters of the way done with a great group of people, and I'll be putting out the word for um, the next roster of online mentorship students uh, starting probably in November, and we'll start uh, the course, which is online and digital, in um, in about March, I think. So that's a really fun time. I've been having a lot of fun, thanks to all those people who signed up. So if you want to sign up, feel free uh, or ask more questions. Feel free to check out my website, returntonature.us. There I have info on it. 
and then uh, send me an email at dan at return to nature us and if you also want to know other online schools I'm sure there's tons out there I know um, Sage Apopham from the Evolution School of Evolutionary Herbalism does a lot of online courses I think uh, Juliet Blank Spore uh, does an online course. I'm pretty sure uh, Rosemary Gladstar has an online course. Uh, lots of online courses, so check those out. Find which one costs you. I'd love to have you uh, join in the year of foraging and videos. You know, so I'll do like uh, live videos with the students, and they can ask anything they want. And I go through a series of homeworks and uh, basically just helping them develop their medicine cabinet and identify plants and work with them seasonally. So feel free to uh, join in that. Frankie says, to not throw stones in a glass house. That is very important. Three uh, quotes I continue to think about are, um, if you plan to seek revenge, make sure to dig two graves. This is a very profound Buddhist quote. And then, those who live in glass houses should not throw stones, another one. And uh, the third one is, um, Jesus said, uh, let, let he who is free of stain, I prefer that over sin, um, let he who is free of stain throw the first stone, and uh, all very important things of forgiveness, um, not pointing our fingers at the opposing side and uh, blocking them out, you know, engaging in dialogue, communicating healthily and clearly, all very important things to keep in mind. Um, let's see... So, sending y'all lots of love. Really appreciate you joining. Um, definitely check out lots more uh, articles, upcoming classes, videos, online course, herbal goods, anything like that at returntonature.us. And uh, join me on Instagram at returntonature. Twitter, uh, I think it's Shakti Bhakta. Um, YouTube.com backslash returntonatureskills. Tons of videos on there. So sending y'all lots and lots of love. Oh, Tony asks about uh, Rishi, when to harvest. Check out my uh, Foragers broadcast video on YouTube about uh, ethical harvesting of Rishi. I talk all about it there. So sending lots of love, peace and blessings.